welcome to the music venue Sam Squash at the Great Escape. I'd like to just quickly run you through a few announcements. Music Venue Trust has this year really sort of um, doubled down on our commitment to our work across the UK. And we're really proud that we now have Welsh and Scottish coordinators in the team. They're part-time roles, but they're super important to us. And they've joined our venue support team under Clara's lead so that we now have two English coordinators, a Welsh and a Scottish coordinator. I know that leaves Northern Ireland slightly to the side and that's very frustrating, but we have now put in place a Northern Ireland steering group. So we are regularly talking to the venues there and hoping that that will help guide our work. We do, however, have some really exciting news for Northern Ireland, which is that Music Venue Trust and Belfast City Council have a partnership in which Belfast City Council are putting some money into the Pipeline Investment Fund pot, and that money will be available for venues in Belfast exclusively to apply to for improvements to their grassroots music venues. So we're extremely grateful for Belfast City Council being the first council in the UK to put money into the pot, and we hope that that will prompt other councils to look at doing that too, where they have clusters of venues. In Welsh news, uh, thanks to Creative Wales, we're in the midst of delivering some training workshops across Wales. In Scottish news, I'm delighted to tell you that Music Venue Trust and the Cross Party Group on Music are presenting a panel at the Festival of Politics in August. Um, it's a real privilege to do this. It's a festival, a talking festival, that takes place in the Scottish Parliament. So representatives will be on that panel on the Friday evening. It's Friday the 11th of August, and we have got a robust discussion about the grassroots levy taking place in Scottish Parliament. Um, so if you are going to be in Edinburgh in that week, please do join us. We would love to see you. I am really pleased to tell you, after much work from men, particularly in the team, we have a venue and a date confirmed for Venues Day this year. So we will be emailing everyone, but I'm officially announcing today. Venues Day 2023 will be held on Tuesday the 17th of October at Woolwich Works in London. We very much hope that as many of you as possible will be able to join us. It is the largest gathering of grassroots music representatives in the world. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Claire Miller Nelson from Arts Council England. So over the last uh, few years, I think since May 2019, when we originally launched our Supporting Grassroots Live Music Fund, we've invested um, 7.23 million in 378 projects taking place in grassroots music venues around England. And I'm really pleased that we've been able to secure the funding so that, that that opportunity to apply for funding for venues, directly for venues, so applications from venues themselves or from promoters who work in venues, um, can be made. Uh, and we've got another 1.5 million opened up for the coming year. And beyond that, we've been able to secure a way to keep the fund going through to September 2025. 80% of people uh, accessing the fund were able to support more artists. We had uh, people programming a wider range of genres, reaching more diverse and a younger audience, engaging with more individuals and groups, um, being more financially resilient, uh, changing their long-term um, models, their financial models, um, and really being able to access funding support, some capital investment around sound, lighting, environmental improvements, better access to the venues and so on. So lots of really, really great changes. The reason I'm mentioning that impact assessment is because that is what allowed me to make the ask at Arts Council England to secure more funding through to September 2025. So please do, when Mark asked you for data, or if we asked you for data, please, I know it can be a complete pest, feed it into the system because it makes all the difference in allowing us to make the argument for supporting you. Government is listening, I won't say more. 
So good luck with your applications. Um, the other thing I'm just going to say, even though it's not technically under this header, is that Arts Council was also able to put in uh, 500,000 to the Music Venue Properties Initiative. And again, that came from an identification of the absolute critical role that grassroots venues play in supporting the infrastructure of the UK music industry. So or there's a, an expression in Scotland, which is mere grist your mill, which means keep at it. It's really working. Thanks very much. Listen, thank you all for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. These, these venues are getting bigger and bigger, and there seems to be more and more of you every time we get together. So I think that's a really nice thing about the sector. Today we have here copies of this, the annual report. Now, uh, you've had free cake and a lovely onion tart. I really need you to take one of these reports with you and give it to somebody who hasn't read it, because it's unbelievably important. This is the first time there's ever been an annual report like this about our sector. And, and in it, you can read exactly how difficult it is right now for grassroots music venues in the UK. This is a 500 million pound sector, 30,000 people working in it, 176,000 performances a year, 22 million visitors. It's operating on a 0.2% profit margin. That isn't sustainable. Everybody needs to understand this. This work is the research and development wing of the UK music industry. That industry is about to have the busiest year it's ever had in live music. But right now, one grassroots music venue is closing down every week. That's not good enough and it has to stop. Look, this has got to be changed. This is the research and development. It can't be done any longer by the independent venue operators that you're seeing in this room. Go and ask them. We can't afford to put three new bands on on a Tuesday. We're hemorrhaging money. If those new bands don't go on the stage, anybody here from an arena, anybody here from a stadium, anybody here from any of the big companies, you're not gonna have bands in 10 years. All right, and I've just written a Substack column, which you can go and follow me on Substack if you like, and I've just said, I'm sorry, it's not going to be replaced by TikTok. Grow the f up, all right? It's not. Because you've got a load of clips on YouTube doesn't mean you're going to sell tickets in the Guildford Boiler Room. You're going to need to go out and sell tickets. This is a data-based industry where it relies on artists that can actually prove people want to give them money to go and see them. That's not the same as getting a load of clicks because you made a funny video. But I particularly picked a fight with Sam Ryder, which you should never do because I really like Sam. All right, actually, he's a really nice guy and he's worked unbelievably hard. But right now in the middle of Liverpool, there's a 60 foot high poster and it says TikTok, where stars are created. <laughs> Sam Ryder was not created by TikTok. Sam Ryder was created by Sam Ryder. If you think that you created a guy who spent 14 years trying to build his career before he finally had some hits on video on TikTok, you're an idiot. Why don't you leave our industry and let people understand music run it? Because you're not fit to be in it, frankly. That was TikTok's bit. Right. <laughs> so, what can be done? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to Claire and everybody else here from the Arts Council in England. Last year, I was, I was here, we announced the Own Our Venues project. We asked you to join us in trying to change the ownership model of these venues. We found nine venues around the country in areas where maybe they're the last venue, maybe they're the last access to culture. They were all in deprived areas of the country. They're all desperately in need of those venues. We set out a plan to buy them and with help from people like Arts Council England and I should big up Nesta as well, but mostly from people like you in this room who got, on, got online and put your own money into it. We raised 2.35 million pounds. We're buying those nine venues and the process has started already. And once we do that, we'll be back out on the market telling everybody, listen, these 1,200 people who put their money in, they now own these nine venues. They are the freeholders. They can make sure they're going to be there for all time. And we need to expand that model. So thank you to all of you for supporting that initiative. But there's loads more work to be done on that. The other thing I want to talk about, and you probably heard me talk about it too much already, is there's going to have to be investment from the top of the industry, the most successful parts of the industry, into the grassroots of the industry. This cannot go on. We cannot see 
the biggest stars, the biggest events, turning over these massive sums, and there being no investment whatsoever in the new talent they're going to need in 10 years' time. In this country, we're planning to build eight new arenas in the next three years. It increases the capacity of our arenas by 110,000 people a night. Not one single one of those arenas has any plan at all to invest in new British talent. They don't care where the talent comes from. They don't care if all the venues closed down. They just want to make as much money as possible. Well, you know what? Don't open them if you can't invest in the new talent. If you don't have a plan of how you're part of making new talent come through, you don't have a venue in 10 years. You have an empty white elephant carbuncle sat on the edge of Manchester, everybody bemoaning as to why it was never allowed to open. I'm looking right at you, Oakview Group. Oakview Group want to open the Manchester Colt Live Arena, 23,000 capacity. What's their plan to invest in talent? None whatsoever. That is not good enough. There needs to be some recognition that when you sell tickets at arena level and at stadium level, every ticket sold must contribute to the development of British talent. We've created a way for to do that. We've created something called the Pipeline Investment Fund in the last eight months, seven months. Since October, whenever that was, I don't even know what day it is. I've been, I've been asleep for four hours. In the last seven months, we have distributed 260,000 pounds to 62 venues. We did that by putting a small charge and making contributions on every ticket we sold on the national lottery tours. And some of the venues in this room took some of those shows and agreed we could take all the ticket money and put it into that fund. That money has improved those venues for the artists, the communities, everybody around them. They're more sustainable now. One pound on every arena ticket would raise 18.7 million pounds. Now don't tell me you can't put a pound on a ticket because I've just been on a website this morning and apparently you can charge me £1.50 to print the ticket at home that I just bought off you. So if you can find £1.50 for me to use my own ink in my own printer and print out my own ticket on my own paper so that I can show it to you at your venue, I'm pretty sure you can find £1 so that grassroots music venues aren't closing down at a rate of once a week. We need to get real about this. A lot of stuff that happens in our music industry is pretty opaque, and we don't like talking about it. Okay, it's time to talk about it. It's £3.25 restoration levy to make sure the arena stays open. Nothing for the grassroots music venues. It's £2.50 maintenance levy to do whatever you do with a maintenance levy. Nothing for the grassroots music venues. £1.50 to print your ticket at home. Nothing for the grassroots music venues. Not good enough. Change it. You sat in the room and you think this is going to be more difficult. It isn't going to be more difficult. Enter Shikari announced they're doing it for their whole arena tour last week. If they can do it, everybody can do it. They're playing ASM Global venues, AEG venues. They're being promoted by AEG and DHP. Don't tell me you can't do it. You can do it. What's the resistance to doing it? It's that you don't want to talk about all the other charges that you've already got on the ticket, and you don't want a big public discussion about whether they're justifiable or not. Okay, well, we're now having it. I'm having it with you, 150 people in this room, and you're going to go out and say, God, there was a really angry bloke in some church this morning going on about charges on tickets. Well, I'm going about charges on tickets because we need that money to invest it in new British talent, and you are going to give it to us. Every MP now cares about this. Government departments care about this. I'm meeting with the Secretary of State for Culture. I'm meeting with the Culture Minister. Please, please trust me on this. A government-imposed levy on tickets in the UK on live music is the worst idea I've ever heard. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Because that money will end up going into the same pots it always does, with government using it for all kinds of things we don't want to use it for. Let's have our own contribution from every ticket that we all have a stake in, that we can make work for us and do the things that we need to do for our industry. What about if we used some of it to not pay support bands 50 pounds? Like, does anybody think, does anybody think that a support band can play that big for 50 quid anymore? Of course I can't. Do you know what, the first gig I ever broke in 1985, that's how old I am. Don't get worried by that. I paid £50 for a band called The Flatmates to support the Brilliant Corners. And last week, 
A band came to me and said, oh, we're getting 50 quid tonight, we're really pleased with that. Why are you pleased about it? You should be sodden angry, properly angry. We should be able to pay our staff. Do you know how much venue operators are earning? 20,400 pounds a year on average. They work 66 hours a week. That means they're paying themselves less than minimum wage. In an industry that turns over billions of pounds, we are relying on people who can't make minimum wage to create our next great level of talent that fills our arenas. Not good enough. If you take anything from this long rant, go out today, take one of these reports, give it to somebody in the position of power, and say, mate, not good enough. You've got to do better than this. Thank you for all that. I've got one more thing to talk about, and that's because I'd like to leave you with a bit of good news. We are delighted to announce that stuff is always happening. We're always working. And we are able to announce today that we have done another deal with the National Lottery, who have been fantastic in the last few years. We are today announcing the National Lottery is united by music, a £1.5 million investment through Music Venue Trust to support artists to go out and play the tours they need to play in the venues that we need to get them into. We are able to offer great fees out to artists. We're able to make sure the venue is economically viable when they're putting these shows on. Everybody gets paid, and we're halving the entry fee. We give the tickets one, buy one, get one free. So 1.5 million pounds for National Lotteries United by Music campaign. I forget who the headliners are. Cat Burns is one of the headliners we're putting out. Blossoms, Metronomy, two others I can't mention yet. Those are the headline things we get. We, we get the headlines for, but they aren't really what we're doing. We're putting money into the dirty nil. We're putting money into just small bands that need to go out and play their first tour, making sure they get paid. Okay, listen, thank you. Really appreciate you coming on. Please, please take one of these with you. Please give it to somebody that you, you meet in the street and say, look, please read this. Grassroots music venues really desperately need your help now. And, and I'd like to leave you with this. It can be changed. It doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to permit venues to close down. We don't have to tolerate communities losing access to music. We don't have to uh, tolerate failing artists, failing to support their careers. This is a big industry. We can have the best grassroots music venue network in the world, even better than we've already got. Please support your local venue. Please get behind this campaign to get the rest of the industry to do the same. Thank you very much.